What if I told you that in just one month, we discovered a hidden moon around Uranus, found evidence of a planet around our nearest stellar neighbor, and witnessed a space rivalry that's reshaping humanity's future in orbit? August has been wild, and today we're diving into every mind-blowing development you need to know about. SpaceX just hit their 100th Falcon 9 launch of 2025. Think about that for a second. 100 launches in 8 months. That's more than one rocket every two and a half days. The entire world used to launch maybe 100 rockets per year, just a decade ago. Now SpaceX alone is doing that in less than a year. And we're not even in October yet. This isn't just about impressive numbers though. This airline-like tempo is fundamentally changing how we think about getting to space. But here's where it gets really interesting. That space SpaceX mission on August 24th wasn't just delivering the usual supplies to the International Space Station. They sent up something called a Station Boost Kit that lets the Dragon spacecraft actually push the ISS into higher orbit using its own thrusters. Now why does this matter? Well, normally, only Russian Progress spacecraft can boost the ISS. But with tensions in global politics, having backup options is crucial. This Dragon Boost capability isn't just about redundancy though, it's a test run for future space stations that might not have Russian support at all. Meanwhile, over in New Zealand, Rocket Lab just hit their own milestone with their 70th Electron launch. While SpaceX dominates the heavy lifting game, Rocket Lab has become the undisputed champion of small satellite deployment. They're like the reliable pickup truck of space launches while SpaceX is the 18-wheeler. But America isn't the only player making moves. Europe's Iran-6 rocket had a picture-perfect launch on August 13th, putting a crucial weather satellite into orbit. After some early hiccups, Iran-6 is finally hitting its stride, and that matters more than you might think. This wasn't just any weather satellite. The METOP SG-1 is Europe's next generation climate monitoring system. With climate change accelerating, having independent, reliable access to space for weather monitoring isn't just nice to have, it's absolutely essential. And then there's China, making a move that should have everyone paying attention. They launched the first satellites for something called the Guang Constellation. If that name doesn't ring a bell, think of it as China's answer to Starlink we're now looking at a three-way race for global internet from space. SpaceX Starlink, Amazon's upcoming Coupier, and China's Guang. This isn't just about internet access. Whoever controls the majority of low Earth orbit internet infrastructure will have enormous influence over global communications in the 21st century. Now let's talk about the discoveries that are literally rewriting astronomy textbooks. The James Webb Space Telescope has been absolutely on fire this month, and I mean that in the best way possible. First up, we have a new moon. Well, Uranus does. Webb spotted a tiny, 10-kilometer wide rock orbiting between two of Uranus's known moons. That brings the total count to 29 moons around the ice giant. Now you might be thinking, so what? It's just a tiny rock. But here's the thing. The discovery shows us that Webb's incredibly sensitivity is revealing hidden architecture throughout our solar system. We're finding things we never knew were there, which means our maps of the outer solar system are still incomplete. But that's not even Webb's biggest discovery this month. Are you ready for this? Webb found evidence, and I stress evidence because it's still being confirmed, of a planet around Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri isn't just any star system. It's our nearest stellar neighbor at just over four light years away. If there's really a planet there, it instantly becomes the most interesting target for future telescopes and dare I say it, humanity's first interstellar probe mission. Webb also gave us sobering news about the famous TRAPPIST-1 system. Remember those seven Earth-sized planets that got everyone excited about potentially habitable worlds? Well, Webb's new analysis suggests that TRAPPIST-1d, one of the planets in the habitable zone, has either an extremely thin atmosphere or no atmosphere at all. This is a reality check about red dwarf stars. They might be the most common type of star in the galaxy, but their tendency to blast their planets with radiation makes atmospheric retention really challenging. It doesn't rule out life around red dwarfs, but it does suggest it's going to be rarer and more resilient than we hoped. Speaking of things from far away, 
we just got our third confirmed visitor from another star system. An object designated 3i Atlas was discovered in July and confirmed this month to be on an unbound trajectory, meaning it's definitely not from our solar system. This makes it only the third known interstellar object after the famous Oumuamua in 2017 and Comet Borisov in 2019. Every one of these visitors is like getting a free sample of material from another planetary system delivered right to our cosmic doorstep. Early estimates put 3i Atlas at a few kilometers across, making it larger than the Oumuamua, so smaller than the Borisov. As our detection methods improve, we're realizing these interstellar travelers might be more common than we thought. We're essentially getting a peek at the raw materials that built other worlds around other stars. Now let's talk about human achievement for a moment. NASA astronaut Mike Finke just reached 400 cumulative days in space during his current mission on the ISS. 400 days, that's over 13 months of living and working in microgravity across multiple missions. This kind of long duration experience isn't just impressive, it's essential. Every day humans spend in space teaches us something new about how our bodies adapt, how to maintain equipment in harsh conditions, and how to sustain human presence beyond Earth. This experience is directly feeding into plans for lunar bases, Mars missions, and commercial space stations. And for those of us still firmly planted on Earth, August gave us a special treat. We had what's called a black moon on August 23rd. That's just a fun term for the second new moon in a single month, but it created perfect dark skies for anyone wanting to catch the tail end of the Perseid meteor shower or try their hand at astrophotography. Finally, I want to highlight something beautiful that happened on August 23rd. India celebrated National Space Day, commemorating the anniversary of their successful Chandrayaan-3 lunar landing. They held a nationally televised space quiz that drew millions millions of student participants. Well, that's all the news for this month. Please be sure to subscribe, follow, and hit the bell for more videos. For Cosmo Knowledge, I'm Carlos Gonzalez. See you next time.